Jiren took the B out of the Bishikukai organization, Tommy immediately appeared to inquire. However, Jiren no longer wishes to serve Bishikukai and decides to betray them. He is the longest standing member and also their special culinary advisor. Grinpatch does not understand why he wants to leave. Star June also appears, knowing that he joined the organization only to acquire something, something special that Star June would not give him even if he died. Tommy prepares to attack, Grinpatch withdraws his straw, Star June draws his sword to finish off the traitor's life, but with a wave of his hand, all three are blown away. He immediately throws a blue sphere that pierces through space and the castle, causing it to collapse, burying the Bishakukai members. If Jiren fights for real, their lives won't be spared either. He takes out infinite bees, which will take him to the world's number one ingredient. The bee is released, drawing an infinite circle and heading to a distant place. He follows the brown bee's footsteps, the three Bishakukai members can only stand there in anger, unable to do anything to him. In a distant place, there is a strange sunflower garden facing the starry sky, in front of which a mysterious woman admires the earthly wonders. The Candyland is hosting a grand culinary festival, with music stages featuring famous bands to entertain the audience. They help their customers enjoy the food more fully. A place like this couldn't be without the presence of Gourmet Saint Toriko, even Komatsu and Rin follow him on this journey. Toriko is here primarily to eat, Rin is here just to date Toriko, not caring about the food and drinks, while Komatsu is here to socialize with Smile, the architect who built this area. Although this candy land is meant for eating, thanks to Toriko's eating power, it's at high risk of early closure. Looking at his disappointed face and his forced smile, it's clear he's reaching the depths of despair. Suddenly, Tepe appears, finding the park very interesting. They enjoy everything from the sundial to the roller coaster, landing safely at the food stalls. Wherever they go, they eat everything, and the constant buzzing is a sign that Smile's family is preparing to sell their house and move to an island, they seem to be eating both the present and his family's future. Tepe is not only here to enjoy good food but also to ask Toriko to accompany him to Acacia's kitchen. Toriko is shocked, this is Igo's closed sanctuary, known only to high-ranking Igo members. It's the former number one sanctuary with the nickname Acacia's Kitchen. Tepe's master investigated this sanctuary, rumored that Acacia left behind his special menu and ingredients to make it there. It's a legendary menu that can fill the hearts of those who have just broken up. They board a plane. And the pilot of that flight is Tomu. On the flight, Toriko is confident that he will devour the legendary menu. Tina is reporting the latest news from the gourmet wholesale and retail market, as soon as the news ends, she eagerly collects new information. The director's appearance frightened her to death, normally, this boss would play around with her in various ways, but this time she's out of time and he's still here to criticize her? The director orders her to go to the library to look for some documents. While badmouthing her boss, she sneezes, slips, and falls to the ground, causing several bookshelves to collapse along with her. To clean up this mess, she might as well clean until she dies. In the midst of misfortune, she finds a stroke of luck as she picks up a photograph. In that picture, Setsuno is standing next to a mysterious woman. With her experience, she knows for sure this photo will lead her to sensational news. Everyone is excited for this trip as they're getting closer to Acacia's legendary menu. Suddenly, Tomo speaks up, perhaps he needs to get additional insurance for this beloved helicopter, ahead of them is a huge storm, swallowing everything around it. This is one of the seven wonders of the gourmet world, the hungry triangle, resembling a gourmet pyramid. Any ship or plane entering the area between the three points will immediately disappear from the map. As if the ship had been swallowed by the sea. That's why it's called the Hungry Triangle. But Acacia's kitchen is located in the center of the Hungry Triangle. Upon hearing this, Komatsu wants to jump out of the plane and escape. Everyone fastens their seatbelts, which startles Komatsu, while Tomo accelerates the helicopter to pass through the vortex outside. Just as they enter, the airplane's clock breaks. Misfortune still hasn't let them go, monsters follow them, and Tomo transforms into a skilled pilot, maneuvering the plane to quickly escape from those monsters. Not stopping there, multi-headed snakes appear, fiercely attacking the helicopter, forcing Tomo to showcase his skills to escape the onslaught of demons. Just as they escape the monsters, thunderstorms approach, causing one side of the plane's wing to explode. Komatsu screams, and if Toriko doesn't tell him to shut his mouth, he might bite his tongue off. The plane loses control, spinning freely in the sky, and just then, a ray of hope appears to save Komatsu's life in this turbulent flight. They think they're safe, but a moment later, they almost perish as they crash into the wall in front. Luckily, with his professional piloting skills, Tomo maneuvers and saves everyone's lives, finally landing safely in the sea.
The ship's door opens, revealing a beautiful scene, surrounded by a table cage, the island is shimmering under the radiant sunlight, making Acacia's kitchen even more glamorous and beautiful. All four of them will sail to the island, while Toma will stay on the helicopter to wait for news from them, hoping they will bring back Acacia's famous menu for him to enjoy those legendary dishes. They've approached the island, but a major problem arises, the island is surrounded by a table cage, so they don't know how to get inside, there's no entrance. If there's no door, the only way is to hit hard to pierce through the protective layer. Thinking about it, Toriko throws a knife towards the table cage, but it doesn't even crack a bit. This reckless action worries Tepe greatly, what if a series of dangerous creatures burst out because he drilled a hole? Remember, this is the most dangerous sanctuary. Kamatsu realizes something strange, a creature easily passed through the table cage to get inside. He tapped a few times and then leaned in, causing him to be pushed inside, all four entered through that secret entrance. This place looks like a tunnel made of orichalcum shells, the muscle in the gourmet world, its shell is harder than diamonds. Exiting the tunnel, they arrived at an endless plain, before them were countless flying creatures, below the sea, rare fish species swam alongside beautiful coral reefs, embellishing the beauty of the ocean, while flowers bloomed abundantly. Fire dragons carried volcanic mountains on their backs. Thousands of ancient structures still existed, here, they all together formed an immensely magnificent island, the Acacia Kitchen. This is where all the rare ingredients of the gourmet world are gathered. Tina sought out Setsuno's restaurant to investigate the identity of the mysterious woman in the photo. Setsuno was ecstatic because after decades, her beauty hadn't faded at all. The identity of the mysterious woman was revealed to be a chef, Setsuno, and that person had trained together in cooking since they were young. Setsuno is a talented chef, considered a national treasure, whoever trained with her must be extraordinary too. Just then, the door opened, and the clown Zonga appeared, causing a ruckus in the restaurant as soon as he entered, so Setsuno refused to serve him, annoying Zonga. He and his entourage had gone through all the alleys of the town but couldn't enjoy any food because the restaurants here sold food at exorbitant prices. Therefore, he and his entourage thought that if they went to a small eatery, the food there would be cheaper and of good quality. Without money, he had to accept it. Tina was angry because Zonga was extremely rude to the national treasure, after which the two argued loudly, and Setsuno ignored them, smiling at the photo. The Toriko group continued their journey and encountered a cabbage garden, as soon as they arrived, everyone started picking and eating. Suddenly, a savanna dragon passed by, this species was extinct in the outside world. It was about to land when it was bitten by an electric eel, causing it intense pain. It bit back at the eel, making it let go. This eel emitted very strong electric waves. Perhaps it was the reason why the airplane's clock broke. Before them was an ancient ruin, all inscribed with ancient characters, according to the ancients, this place was the home of the nitro. This dilapidated area, Acacia was the first to discover it. Initially, this sanctuary was established to study these ruins. Terry discovered a strange point on the top of the temple, which was the radiant sunflower garden. It stored sunlight and was also called the small sun. It is said that Nitro left it here, and this is the ingredient in Acacia's special menu. Kamatsu was about to touch the flower when a strange noise occurred. Terry quickly grabbed Kamatsu and took him to safety. A woman and a cat landed in front of them. She warned them to stay away from the flowers, threatening to attack anyone who dared to approach them. Tipe tried to explain that they were not enemies, suddenly, she noticed the infinite bee. The sky turned from blue to black, signaling an impending disaster. The top of the orichalcum was pierced, in the mist, Jerem appeared, probably here to take possession of these flowers. Jerem approached the pink-haired girl, it seemed like he was about to destroy this garden. He came here not to search for Acacia's menu but for something deeper, he was about to attack when Toriko rushed in to stop him, but he only needed a kick to send Toriko flying hundreds of meters away. Rin shot pink smoke towards him. He immediately retaliated, making her fall backward. Tepe rushed up to confront him alone. But before he could strike three moves, he was kicked out by him. Having enough energy, he fired a sphere forward, Kamatsu stubbornly rushed in to save the girl. Fortunately, the two pets quickly saved everyone out, Jerem's attack blew up the top of the temple, all the sunflowers were dead, the seal was broken. At the Bishokukai organization's castle, they were monitoring Jerem with robots, so they knew that the people on the island had hidden Acacia's special menu and its ingredients. Bishikukai was determined to obtain the ingredients before they fell into Jerem's hands. Toriko woke up. The girl in the pink dress was cooking for him. As soon as he woke up, he went to find Kamatsu, just then, he returned with some firewood in his hands. Toriko tried to stand up to find the others. 
At that moment, the girl in the pink dress told him that Terry had carried the others on his back and left that area. She handed him a bowl of porridge, after eating a piece, Toriko found it very delicious, so he ate eagerly. Komatsu was the one to taste the next dish, he also felt it was very delicious, it's probably snow sugar. It's a dish that helps everyone quickly regain vitality. Seeing both of them praising the food, she was very happy. Toriko's muscles had grown bigger after he finished eating. And his wounds had healed, it was thanks to his gourmet cells. At this moment, Toriko became curious about the beautiful woman's identity. She is the director of this botanical garden. Her name is Ayam, responsible for managing this vast landscape along with her cute cat, Pachi. She is a model leader, multitasking as both the boss and a staff member to oversee this extensive botanical area. Komatsu was amazed by her introduction. Ayam took out beefish to cook, a very rare type not available in the market. Seeing Komatsu's cooking skills, Ayam couldn't help but admire him. His culinary expertise, combined with impressive knife skills, assured her of his culinary mastery. Through the ingredients and spices used in the dish, Komatsu deduced that Ayam is an excellent chef. Upon hearing that title, Ayam couldn't help but feel melancholic. She became even sadder when she noticed the great chemistry between Komatsu and Toriko. Long ago, she was in a relationship with a gourmet hunter. Their signature dish in their menu was the sunflower they found here. Thus, when the sunflowers bloomed in this botanical garden, she volunteered to take care of them, always believing that the person would return. But the worst happened. The ancient ruin on the island was the freezer created by Nitro. The radiant sunflowers absorbed energy from sunlight and transmitted it to the freezer via underground cables. Sunflowers were the sole energy source for that freezer. When the freezer lost its power supply, the energy from the ingredients would thaw and regenerate. At that moment, a GT robot fired energy beams at them. Toriko immediately prepared for combat. In front of him were three robots, red, orange, and yellow. At this point, the acacia relic began to open, and the ingredients inside started to thaw. Rin and Tepe's team were being chased by a team of robots, but Rin quickly shot smoke towards them and escaped. On Toriko's side, he was furious that his wonderful meal was ruined, so he quickly rushed in to defeat them. Pachi and Ayam also swiftly took down the robots. Only Komatsu didn't know which dish was being taken by the robot for dissection. Just as he was about to be cornered, Koko fell from the sky towards it, causing the robot to explode. Tepe also sent a message to Koko to come here to collect ingredients, he thought he was the only one invited. Tepe and Terry were fiercely fighting with several robots. Rin had just used a gun to shoot one robot when a purple robot suddenly rushed in. In a difficult moment, Sani appeared from nowhere and defeated the robot. Princess Sani stood gracefully on the mountain top. The battle continued, Toriko unleashed his ultimate move, sending the robot flying far away. Koko was chasing the orange robot, shooting poison towards it. However, the robot played dirty and pulled him down to the ground. Ayam was struggling in the battle, but Pachi came to throw her on his back and took her away. Just then, a robot hit her acupuncture point, and she immediately turned back into her 70-year-old appearance, surprising Komatsu. The robots and Koko drew their swords, Toriko also bulged his muscles, preparing for his final move. Both sides clashed, victory or defeat was already determined. Toriko used his fork and knife technique to destroy two robots, while Koko also cut one robot in half, the control core of one robot managed to escape. The secret was revealed, I am rejuvenated by using Machi Passion, leaving Komatsu and Toriko beside them puzzled. At Mrs. Setsuno's restaurant. Tina got the first information about that woman, she was Ayam, a retired chef. Mrs. Setsuno didn't know where that woman was now. At that moment, Jiro and Ichiryu appeared to invite Mrs. Setsuno to go out, and Yasaku also showed up. Immediately after, they announced that the ingredients in the Gourmet World's refrigerator would be revived. Jiram took the bold move to awaken that monster, so they wanted to go first to stop him. Back in the past, Jiram was haunted by finding a better gourmet menu than others, he forgot his original purpose, which was to enjoy delicious food. Therefore, he decided to join the Bishikukai to become stronger. Seeing his current madness, Ayam was determined to forget her past love to take him to his final resting place. At this time, Sani, Jin, and Tepe's group reunited with Toriko's team, all three were extremely surprised when the old lady suddenly turned into a very beautiful woman in an instant. Sani kept asking Ayam how she did it during the trip. This guy seemed to be really interested. When they arrived, everything was terrible, and the thawing part was slowly melting away. 
Even if his lover called, Mr. Jiren didn't listen anymore. Sunny launched his move towards him, not only were his moves broken, but he also counterattacked, causing the mountain they were standing on to explode, a terrifying technique. Finally, someone made the four heavenly kings fear, so they decided to start, heating up their bodies for this battle. Everyone rushed forward, Jirim unleashed his move, forcing them to split up, then each one unleashed their moves towards Jirim, but it seemed that no technique could penetrate his shield. Toriko and Koko closed in, launching physical attacks against him, but before they could reach him, they were both thrown far away by two punches. Tepe holds the iron seed in his hand, which can seal the refrigerator door. Tepe rushes towards the refrigerator when Jirim throws a flaming spear. Rin immediately sprays new cold smoke, helping Terry and Tepe avoid being burned to death. Truly, defeating Jiren is beyond the ability of the Heavenly Kings. Koko sees a strange dark shadow in the sky, and at that moment, the dome is punctured. A giant beetle appears, with Bishikukai Sushef, Grinpatch, riding on its back, flashing a sinister smile that almost makes Sunny vomit. Now things are difficult, fighting both Jiren and Grinpatch. The odds of winning are infinitely slim. Grinpatch unexpectedly blows a strong gust towards Jiren, who remains unfazed, continuing his attack with similar strikes. However, Jirim deploys a countermeasure to prevent him from blowing freely. The Heavenly Kings continue to attack, but their techniques are ineffective, as Jirim effortlessly deflects their blows thousands of meters away. Koko's poison, Sunny's boomerang and binding moves, and Toriko's knife skills combined with his ultimate attack all have no effect on Jirim. After the battle with the GT robot, Toriko no longer has the strength to fight him. He needs to eat something to restore his strength, and he hopes to consume Acacia's ingredient to regain his power and defeat the formidable Jiren. The thawing process is complete, and the secret ingredient has been revived. The body of the Black Dragon, with flames rising from its scales, is revealed. This is the legendary Wolffire Dragon. It is a mythical beast that has lived in the gourmet world for thousands of years, devouring everything in its path, even the strongest creatures are wiped out in an instant. The world is on the brink of apocalypse because of this monster, nicknamed Enlos. Even in his dreams, Tepe never imagined that the ingredient in Acacia's menu would be this Enlos creature. Jirim quickly approaches it, and Grinpatch, realizing the terrifying power of the dragon, recalls his pet and flees as fast as possible from the area. As the wolf fire dragon prepares to engulf Toriko's group, Zebra appears, using his sound-based illusions to stop it, surprising Tepe with his appearance. How could he know to come here? Zebra just happened to overhear the news. With such delicious food, why keep a low profile? Did Tepe plan to monopolize this legendary ingredient alone? He intended to take Zebra back to that beehive prison after everything was done. But before going to prison, Zebra had to eat this dragon. The Heavenly Kings have gathered, and the strongest team is ready for battle. Jelly Limousine takes Setsuno's group to where Bishikukai and IGO collide. Just then, Starjin's team arrives, and he intends to fight Achirio, but Alfaro has prepared GT robots to battle them. Jelly Limousine is ambushed and falls into the sea, facing thousands of robots ahead. It has been a long time since they were besieged by wild beasts in the gourmet world, and the old men and women are fighting together again. Jiro transforms into a giant, impressing Setsuno, as they quickly defeat the robots to meet Ayam. Setsuno glides on the water, kicking down each robot into the sea, while Jiro shoots his gun continuously, causing the robots to explode. Ichiryu effortlessly knocks down a robot with a punch, calmly asking Yasaku about sealing the monster. Yasaku assures him that he has imparted all his experience to his disciple and promises that his cherished disciple will be able to seal it. If he knew that Tepe had lost the seed, he would be very sad. The robots collide with each other like pinballs. Ichirio concentrates his power into a punch, sending the robots flying far away, making them explode one after another in the sky. Toriko launches an attack towards Enlos, but despite being hit, it immediately regenerates and strikes Toriko with its long legs. Fortunately, Terry rushes in to rescue Toriko in time, plunging it hand deep into the roots and absorbing all the nutrients from the tree. Sunny attracts its attention, using Hair Punch to attack the dragon, but it uses all its strength to block and retaliates with Sunny's own technique, hitting Sunny squarely. Koko swiftly runs like the wind, climbing onto the dragon and using Poison Sword to strike Enlos, but it remains unaffected. With a single kick, the dragon sends him back to the ground. Next, Zebra unleashes a Sound Thunder, but none of their attacks seem to harm Enlos in the slightest. Terry and Pachi approach the prey, each biting Enlos once. Ayam unleashes a knocking technique on the Wolf Fire Dragon's head, causing immense pain. 
the dragon flings all three of them away. At this moment, the heavenly kings realize their true powerlessness against a beast capable of destroying the world. The sinister shadow is still pursuing them. Zebra realizes they still have a chance to win, the fluid flow in its body is disturbed. So there's a vulnerable spot, where I am struck. The heavenly kings summon their gourmet demons, which tightly restrain the dragon. Zebra initiates the first attack, followed by Coco's poison missile, Toriko's knife, and Sunny's final move. All their combined techniques form a massive spearhead atop the dragon's head. The heavenly kings shout, and the spear plunges straight into Enlos's head, causing it to collapse. Jiren has been waiting for this moment for too long, this gift they've given him is too great to pass up. He takes a deep breath, astonishing everyone as he devours the entire dragon. His muscles swell, unleashing his terrifying power, causing a massive shockwave in the area. Alfaro sees the situation is not favorable, knowing Jiren has devoured the Enlos creature, so he orders his troops to retreat, while the GT robots stay to confront IGO. Vishakukai quickly departs. Jiren's gourmet cells have changed, altering his body's shape. His skin has turned into a mysterious black, having eaten in-laws to activate his gourmet cells. Previously, he had put himself in a state of self-denial by dieting, replacing his cells with in gourmet cells, which is why he didn't eat the shining sunflowers. From now on, all the ingredients in the world belong to him. His gourmet cells transform, and his body bursts into flames. Zebra counterattacks, only to be struck by Jirim. Engulfing him in flames. Sunny and Coco rush in, but before they can reach him, Jirim strikes them down mercilessly. His body has completely transformed now, even Toriko's attack cannot harm him anymore. Victory lies firmly in Jirim's hands. Rin sprays smoke to obstruct his vision and runs to Toriko's side, but he brushes away the smoke and punches her far away. Terry and Pachi also rush in to bite him, but one punch from him disables both the wolf and the cat. Toriko, extremely angry, activates his self-denial mode and summons his gourmet demon, wanting to defend and prevent Jirim from harming anyone else. He charges towards Jirim, believing that Acacia's legendary ingredient has not been consumed because it can fill the heart. He cuts through him, pouring all his strength into the blow, but Jirim remains unscathed and retaliates, making Toriko bleed profusely. Toriko's self-denial process ends, leaving him completely helpless, lying there, allowing Jirim to end his life. At that moment, Ayam steps in to intervene, and Komatsu brings a sunflower to evoke Jirim's memories of the past. If one wants to go far, one must go alone, if one wants to eat well, one must eat together. Komatsu promised Toriko that he would cook Akasha's special menu, so he was willing to risk his life to protect his comrades. Seeing Komatsu talk too much nonsense, Jirim punches him, creating a huge pit in the ground, and everyone falls before his power. Toriko rushes to shield Komatsu and saves him. After blocking the blow, Toriko collapses to the ground, exhausted from just escaping the self-denial state. Ayam generously offers her last precious sunflower to him, transferring its energy to him. Toriko stands up with overwhelming power surging through him, his muscles on his body increased by 20 times, emitting a mysterious light. Toriko knows that Jirim missed an exquisite dish, his body transforms into a golden light, his green hair emitting brilliance, resembling Goku transforming into a super scion. His body radiates energy like sunlight, making Komatsu and Sani squint their eyes. Jirim taunts, Toriko rushes to attack, he unleashes the thunder punch towards Jirim, causing him considerable pain. Immediately, Jirim counters Toriko's attack, followed by fiery punches full of strength exchanged between them. At this moment, Jirim gains the upper hand. Jirim arrogantly states that Toriko, even with his transformation, is too weak, he has eaten Enlos, the legendary ingredient. He then throws a deadly punch that sends Toriko flying into a stone statue and crashing to the ground. Toriko knows the truth isn't that, the ingredient of Acacia isn't Enlos but the sunflower honey. Ever since Ayam took care of those flowers, she knew this. When Toriko consumed its honey, he felt his heart fill. Toriko knows the outcome of this battle, with the power of the sunflower coursing through him, victory is within his grasp. Both ready their spirits and slowly approach each other, unleashing their final moves to finish off the opponent. Toriko's punch penetrates Jirim's armor, sending him flying high into the sky, reaching the highest point before falling back to the ground. It seemed like he exploded like fireworks. The battle ends, the sky regains its original freshness. Ayam runs to Jirim, unable to believe the foolish act of the man she loves. Seeing Jirim move, Toriko asks everyone to find something for him to eat. Sunny wants to refuse, now Coco no longer sees any electrical waves from him, so his recovery is no problem. 
Iam quickly squeezes the last drop of honey for him to drink, that drop brings him back to the old memories, the day he found the sunflower he gave her, a flower full of beauty and radiance. Iam really liked it, so he suggested putting it on the menu and becoming the first dish on their menu. After that, the two lived happily together, hunting together, cooking together, eating together, and admiring the starry night sky together. Jerem's departure ended all those beautiful moments. He went alone to dangerous places to bring back the world's finest ingredients for her, and he would definitely return. However, Jerem never returned, despite his woman waiting tirelessly. It seemed like she was about to forget his face when he returned. Jerem sincerely apologizes to Iam, seeing him awaken made her very happy. Jerem felt like he had awakened from a long dream, he hadn't eaten something delicious like that for a long time, all thanks to Iam nurturing those sunflowers with her love. That's why its honey tastes better than all the worldly delicacies, not only that, it helped him open the door to forgotten memories. Now, the last sunflower has withered away. Suddenly, the flower blooms inside, countless seeds inside, it turns out the infinite bee accidentally pollinated the last flower. Thousands of seeds, carried by the wind to the ends of the horizon, this magnificent scene engraved in the memories of everyone on Gourmet Island. Now Coco understands that the shadows he saw were the dead flowers, they returned to seeds and were reborn, creating new life. Jellyfish limousine of Mrs. Setsuno arrived, they were extremely surprised, the scene created by thousands of sunflower seeds. Zana inhaled too much pollen, so he sneezed, causing the subordinates to fly out off the jellyfish. Tina was lucky to keep one of his subordinates, but within three seconds, she also shared the fate of falling off the ship. Toriko asked about the hidden menu of Acacia, Iam didn't know anything about it, she just knew it was somewhere on this island. The perfect answer. As soon as Zana landed, he was frightened by the mysterious characters carved on the pillars, immediately demanding to leave. Hearing this, Kamatsu realized something, he immediately used his spyglass to look closely at those characters, just as he predicted, they were the recipe for Acacia's menu. Kamatsu may not understand everything written on the stone. But he can understand it roughly like this, what you eat and enjoy with your teammates, gather what you like and cook together. That statement is exactly what Toriko has said before. He can eat whatever he likes, even this entire island, it's just that when you like something, mix them together and you've created a special menu. Suddenly, an earthquake occurs, light emanates from the pillars creating a gigantic super oven, this is the true secret of the nitro-built monument. Right at this moment, Mrs. Setsuno's group arrives, they are very proud that their children have deciphered the mysteries in Acacia's menu. Setsuno reunites with Ayam after years apart, making Tina beside her emotionally almost cry. Jirim apologizes to Ichiria for the troubles he caused, Ichiria doesn't care about that, he only cares about his rumbling stomach. Ichirio congratulates Toriko's group for uncovering Acacia's secret, which is cooking what is not on the chef's menu and enjoying it together with their teammates. Those dishes are just very simple things, but veteran chefs couldn't decipher those secrets for a long time. So he devised a perfect plan to bring the four heavenly kings in to help them decipher the secrets of Acacia's menu. Everything is clear now, it's time to get into the kitchen. They have brought back many rare ingredients, rainbow carrots, red pepper, ground meat stone, the specialties from the Acacia Mountains are all gathered here. Can't wait any longer, Sani and Toriko put the food on the oven immediately, Coco and Rin sprinkle pepper and sauce on the skewers, Zebra adds some chocolate, all the spices and ingredients are gathered on this wonderful dish. Everything is ready for everyone to enjoy. When Toriko takes a bite of meat, it's like bringing the flavor of the entire island here. Sani is extremely happy to eat delicious food, quietly saying, oh my goodness. They are served many dishes under Kamatsu's culinary artistry. Zanya has another chance to brag, if it weren't for his effort to find the formula in the rubble, there wouldn't be such a sumptuous meal, hearing that, Kamatsu immediately expresses his sincere thanks. Mrs. Ayam and Mr. Jiram are together like a newlywed couple, making Jiro and Mrs. Setsuni outside jealous and also deeply moved. When everyone eats together, the joy seems to double, everyone is happy to eat with their familiar teammates. Sunset is also the time for people to say goodbye to each other, Jiram wants to stay on this island to take care of the ecosystem with Ayam. Ichiryu, of course, does not object, before leaving, everyone bids farewell without saying much, they can only promise to meet again soon. The ship takes off, taking them away from the beautiful island, some time later the ecosystem has completely restored, Jiram holds Ayam's hand, taking her to the top of the temple. Where the radiant sunflowers are blooming, that is the amazing ingredient possessing the power of the sun. Next to it is a creature with mysterious power that can bring people together, that is the infinite bee, it has brought the couple back together. Both of them seem to return to their youth, making up for the time they have been apart. 
From then on, they live happily together until the end of their lives. The video ends here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your comments to support the channel. New anime series will be uploaded regularly on 21st Century Anime. Thank you.